Hey, I'm Pete with Moscow Moto, and in today's video, I'm going to share some information about our backcountry cinch straps. These straps first came about, at least the original idea first came about uh, 10 years ago when I was out on a motorcycle trip with some friends, and we had a bike break down in the middle of the trip, and we had to tow it out and then load it in a truck and take it into a dealership to get repaired in the middle of the trip. At that time, most of us were using just basic cam buckle straps to connect our duffels to the bike. These were the same board straps that we use for like surfboards and windsurfing boards and we would just adapt them to use on our motorcycle duffels but they were a real pain in the neck to string around the duffel every day and and tough to connect to the bike but they had the added advantage that in a pinch they worked as a toe strap and they also worked as a tie down i distinctly remember being on that trip and towing that bike out and it was a lot of stop and start because we were in very hilly terrain so we'd stop to disconnect the bike and let it coast downhill and then reconnect and pull uphill and we started a conversation about, hey, wouldn't it be cool if somebody designed a strap that was based on this fundamental idea, but uh, didn't have elastic, didn't have plastic, was like super bomber, and also could work as a toe strap or a tie down strap if you were to forget to bring one on the trip, which happens all the time. So that's where the original idea for the backcountry cinch strap came from. It's basically just a one inch webbing board strap with a cam buckle, but it's been split into two pieces. And then we made it easier to mount on the bike by adding lark's head loops on the end of each piece. So you can just loop it around the bike wherever you want. And then in the morning to connect the straps, you just take the tail end, which has no hardware on it, string it through the cam buckle and off you go. We've made a few modifications to these over the years. Most notably, we made the lark's head loops a lot larger, so it's easier to string on the bike. And then we also, in the original version, we had a cam buckle and a ladder lock for hardware. We had some issues with the ladder locks when people were trying to tow or tie down really heavy bikes in rough terrain. And so we got rid of the ladder lock and we replaced it with a second cam buckle. So now there's two cam buckles instead of one cam buckle, one ladder lock. As I mentioned, there's no plastic and no elastic in use anywhere on these straps. Um, if you've ever had a plastic side release buckle on one of your duffel connection straps fail in the middle of the trip, then you know why that's important. It's a real hassle when that happens. And it happens a lot because there's always a temptation to reef as hard as possible on these straps to keep your duffel secure and eventually you just end up breaking those buckles. Each one of these straps consists of two separate pieces. There's the tail piece, which has no buckles or hardware on it. And then there's the buckle piece, which has the two cam buckles. They're both adjustable. Both pieces are adjustable. The cam buckle piece is kind of a set it and forget it adjustment. So you're gonna do that once at the beginning of the trip. If you have a large duffel, you're gonna make it larger. If you have a small duffel, you're gonna make it shorter. And then you can just kind of leave it alone and your day-to-day -day adjustments are done with only the tail piece. It doesn't really matter whether you put the buckle end or the tail end on the front or back of the bike. In this situation, I've got the buckle end on the back of the bike, and that's because I'm using the little tunnel pass-throughs on the 10-pole pocket on our backcountry duffel. But if you're not doing that, sometimes it's more convenient to put the buckle end on the front. That way, when you pull the straps tight, you're gonna be pulling towards the rear, and the rear of the bike is just a little bit more accessible and easy to get to. On any duffel with any strap, on a motorcycle trip, I always recommend running the strap through some kind of a pass-through on the duffel. All of our Moscow duffels have dedicated pass-throughs for that purpose. If you're using a duffel by another brand or maybe an old kayak or canoe dry bag, then any kind of handle or daisy chain will work for that. But if you run your straps through a pass-through, then you know no matter what happens during the day or if you forget to tighten something down, there's just no way that duffel can kind of squirt out to the side and get lost on the side of the trail. Don't be afraid to really reef on these straps and pull them extra super tight. I usually pull them until I see a nice defined indent in the duffel. And that way um, the strap's not gonna move around because the duffel's sort of dented in like that all the way around everywhere the strap touches it. And then I'll take the duffel and I'll kind of shake it around like this to simulate the first hour of riding. And then I do it again and then I'll shake the duffel again and then I do it again and so on until I feel like I've removed all the potential slack. Then when I'm done, I take the tail end wrap it up and tuck it under the strap keeper. For off-road riding, I really prefer this kind of classic strap over the duffel connection system. There's a bunch of quick release systems out there and there's a bunch of different straps that have elastic in them. And I think those things are really convenient and functional for pavement touring, for shorter trips, but for off-road riding where the terrain is really bumpy and especially longer trips where you're gonna be out for a while, there's just no substitute for this system. It's really secure. The quick release systems put a ton of tension on the seams of the bag. So you get failures at the strap connection points and you also get failures in the seams of the bag because every time you go over bumps and through rough terrain, you're just stressing those seams so much. And the elastic straps have a problem that off-road because there's movement in them, you're always gonna be seeing your duffel moving around, which causes a lot of vibration, by the way, between the duffel and the bike, and that causes damage to the bike and also damage to the duffel. And then the temptation is to try to remove that elasticity by reefing on the straps as hard as you can, and then you have problems with the elastic and problems with the plastic buckles. To rig the backcountry sin straps as a toe strap, 
The most simple reliable thing to do is to take the two tail ends, the ones that have no hardware on them, connect the two lark head loops together and use that as your strap. So you can connect it to the bikes and whatever your preferred method is. Um, but if you want to get fancy, you can also try to use the buckle end as a harness to connect to the bike. That does work and it's super quick and easy, um, but you're going to have to take a look at the specific scenario you're in, the size of the bike, how difficult the terrain you're going to be towing through is, how long you're towing for, and decide whether that's appropriate or if you want to use just the basic strap to connect the two bikes. You know, pulling a 250cc bike down a graded gravel road is a whole different story from trying to extract a 1250GS from hilly, bumpy, rocky off-road terrain. If you do use the buckle end, Keep an eye on the cam buckles, and if you see the webbing starting to slip, just tie a little granny knot in the webbing, and that should stop it. On the buckle end of the strap, just above the lark's head loop, there's a little webbing loop there, and we put that there as a spot to kind of remember to store a carabiner. Depending on the situation you're towing through, if there's a lot of up and downhill terrain, then a carabiner can be really handy to connect the two lark's head loops on the tow strap, because sometimes you want to be able to pull uphill and then quickly disconnect, coast downhill, and then quickly reconnect and tow uphill. And that's how you're going to get the bike out. And the carabiner is just really handy for that. Once you've extracted the broken bike, you get out to a road, you flag down a truck or trailer, the backcountry sin straps convert into your tie down straps. It's really easy to use them as tie down straps. You just take the buckle end, wrap it around the handlebars, take the tail end, wrap it around whatever tie down is on the truck or trailer, connect the two, and it operates just like a traditional cam buckle strap you'd use on your dirt bike. This is also really handy if you board a ferry and you realize you didn't bring any tie down straps with you. You can just disconnect your duffel, take the straps off, tie down the bike, and bring the duffel upstairs with you into the lounge. Again, this is just for emergency use. I wouldn't recommend using the backcountry sin straps as your primary tie down straps, for, especially for big adventure bikes. It works a lot better to use a ratchet strap. There's just so many forces at play when you're transporting those big bikes, but the backcountry sin straps will work in a pinch, in an emergency, they're great for that. If you have any questions about these straps that I didn't cover in this video, please leave us a comment below. We'll get back to you. Or you can always send us a note, moscomoto at moscomoto.com. Thank you so much for watching.